Ladies and gentlemen, we have an amazing guest. We have an expert, Vinny McKenzie from Ann John Pond and Savio Engineering. Uh, and we are going to start asking him the hard questions about running pumps in the winter time. We get this question every so often and it really is a case by case basis. It's a matter of courage. There is some beautiful payoffs with some ice, uh, ice formations and things of that nature. But uh, let's get into the call because I'm not going to do as good a job of explaining this as he is. All right, Vinny, thank you for coming to the podcast here. Uh, we're really excited to have you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. All right, Vinny. Well, we always like to reach out to the experts uh, and and get their opinion. So, uh, you know, let me just kind of give you the stage here. What are the pros and cons of running these features through the winter? Uh, you know, a lot of people struggle with whether or not they are going to take them out. But, uh, you know, why don't I just give you the microphone and, and, and tell us your thoughts on this. Okay. Map. Yeah, there are some pros and some cons to uh, running your feature over the winter. Um, some of the pros, some of the good parts about running your feature over the winter are you get to keep everything running. You get to still enjoy your water feature and you'll also get to see it in a little bit different light than you get to see it in the summertime. Um, you'll get to see some great ice formations building up, some really beautiful ice formations, and you'll also not have to worry about the, the labor of pulling the pump and storing the pump, but there is a little bit of additional maintenance. So that is, uh, there are a couple cons to running it over the winter. Um, you have to be very careful of evaporation. You'll have to check the water level, make sure that your water level isn't getting too low and, you may, and you're not running your pump dry. And you also have to be uh, sure if you have a, a waterfall or a stream to check for any ice formations that may build up and dam up the water and cause you to lose a little bit of, of water in your stream through leakage. It, 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 yeah, you may be able to go get it. Go, uh, you may be able to go a couple days without doing it, but it's something that you will have to do a, a few times a week. Yeah, you will. You'll have to spend maybe twenty or thirty minutes a week with your pond to where, if you were to shut it down and pull your pump and put a net over it, you wouldn't really have to worry about it until you're ready to kick it back up again. So. So. Yeah, I agree with you. I, and personally, I've never left mine on over the winter. Um, I'm just too paranoid. Uh, but the ice formations definitely do sound like a really cool aspect of this. Although that's actually what a lot of people are concerned about. Uh, is there like a uh, kind of like a a line in the sand where you're like, if it, if it's gonna get this cold, I'm gonna take it out. Um, it is, and that it mostly depends on uh, the freeze line where you live. A lot of places, if your pump is three feet below the freeze line, then you can run it over the winter, and you won't you won't have to worry about your skimmer freezing, even if it even if the temperatures get pretty low. Um, I would say, as a rule of thumb, if it's getting anywhere under ten degrees or close to zero. If you think you may have a winter with some temperatures like that, it might be a good idea just to pull the pump and go through the steps of actually shutting down the system. So I would say if you're going to have, if you're in a climate that only gets mild winters and it's your pumps below the freeze line, then you can get away with running your system no problem. So one of the main concerns that people usually have is uh, flooding. You know, if it, if it creates like an ice dam or something, um, you know, you could run out of water in that regard, and then you have a dry pond, you have some dead fish, and it doesn't even matter that it's cold, they're, they're drowning because there's no water. So they have an oxygen depletion. So is that, is that, 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 that would be the, the big elephant in the room, right? You know, that's something you have to pay attention to because if that happens, you're out of luck. Right, yeah, if they have an irrigation system or something like that, they'll have, they'll shut down the irrigation system. So if you have something like an autofill connected to your skimmer with, through your irrigation line and you shut your irrigation system down, then you wouldn't have the option of your autofill filling up the water level for you. So what I'm getting from you is this is going to be a case by case basis and to everyone listening, you know, this is an additional responsibility. This is not 
going to just be a change in your habit where you take the pump out and put in a you know de-icer maybe a, a, a low water uh, aeration system this isn't that this is going to be uh you know there's a risk and re a reward aspect to this so you know one thing i would say and, and i'm kind of dissimilating this from what you're telling me if you're in a place with a harsh winter like guaranteed this isn't a gamble you want to make you know that that's what i'm taking I live in Philadelphia and if we're having a harsh winter, you know, we're, we're getting pummeled with snow more than five times, you know, but we, we go through situations where it'll snow yeah. and that snow will melt off, you know, that kind of instance, I, I'm pretty sure I could operate this system. But you know, my question would be like, if, if you were in Northern New York, obviously you don't want to do this. Yeah, exactly. Like I live in St. Louis, Missouri, so we have really up and down winters. I mean, sometimes we'll have really harsh, really cold winters, and then other times we'll have really mild winters, and I don't have to worry too much about my feature, and I can run it over the winter and enjoy those ice formations. So, yeah, it, it is definitely a case-by-case -case basis, and it's also, you know, how much does the end user, the homeowner, want to maintenance and spend time with their pond over the winter? All right, Vinny. Well, thank you so much for that clarification. And uh, if anyone has any questions about that, they could just reach out to you guys, I'm sure. Um, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you and your products? So you can find us on uh, Anjan, on, on our, both of our websites. We have uh, Savio and we have Anjan Manufacturing. You can find us at www.anjonmfg.com or www.savioeng.com. And we also, we are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. You can find us at Anjan Manufacturing or Savio Engineering on any of those social media platforms. All right, Vinny, well, thank you so much for your time and we will catch up with you at a later episode. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Webs Water Gardens podcast brought to you by websonline.com. If you want any of the products that uh, Vinny and his people make or anything else, you know right where to find us. If you want to give us a call and ask us questions uh, about anything that's plaguing you during the winter season, you can find our email and our phone number right online. Till next time, take care and enjoy your pond.